Hello everyone, welcome to Gaming with a Dad. I'm the dad, Steve. Who? This is Zach the Gamer. You use that controller, Steve! Thanks everybody for watching. <laughs> Let's bring the mood back up and get into something cheerful, like Kevin Lee's career? <laughs> <laughs> like Kevin Lee's career. Has Kevin Lee, in your eyes, you're, you're the resident fighting expert, right? I am the complete and utter <laughs> fighting novice. Wait. Please don't don't put that on me because that would only open our channel up to a lot of attention. You're the don't. fighting <laughs> expert here. Oh boy. <laughs> Where is Kevin Lee in his career? He at just the start? Has he had a is he in his second wind? Is he still is he still down or is he on his way out? Where are we in Kevin Lee's I don't believe he's on his way out. Not in danger of heading to a place like uh in my opinion, uh not not in any danger of heading to Bellator or another organization. Kevin Lee is still, you know, a name that people will tune in to watch, if not for any other reason, to see him beat. I think, get to see him get beat. I think he's matured a lot since the Kevin Lee that we've seen before in the past. It's made statements like, oh, Daniel Cormier is going to cry in the car, and then he himself cried after his fight with uh, Tony Ferguson. Uh, his recent win, you know I didn't think that was coming, Right. I will go on the record and say that I absolutely had him dominated in that fight because that seemed to be where he was heading. So he made a huge transition in camps, went down to a uh, TriStar there in uh, Canada with Faraz Ahabi and uh, St. Pierre, where the current uh, uh, former welterweight champion Ty Tyron Woodley is training too, I believe. Now, right? So, yeah. uh, did Tyron move to TriStar? I thought yeah, Ty sure. I thought Tyron was still in. Um... Uh, Rufus's camp. I'll get, I'll get back. I'm pretty sure he went down there and he said that it was they're not going to fight. But at any rate, you go down to TriStar and not only are you going to have guys you're going to mix it up that are going to help you grow, but you're training with one of the possibly the greatest trainers ever, right? Guys attack for us at Hobby is a genius when it comes to tactician and uh, strategy, all those things. You get a chance to uh, scramble with George St. Pierre and some of the best grapplers. They have a staple of amazing uh, coaches down there. So, Kevin Lee comes out, does something that seemed impossible. He looked pretty dominant in the fight. Those guys were going back. I don't want to say dominant. They were trading back and forth pretty consistently, right? No one threw anything that had really stunned the other up until the point where Kevin Lee threw a hook and then came over with the kick, knocked the guy clean out. What does that mean for his career? We got to see more, right? I hate yeah. to sound like I hate to sound like Chael Sonnen, but after that, I want to see more. I, you know, we see shades of greatness from Kevin Lee, and uh, we were talking prior to filming, uh, going to film this, and uh, we got another guy who's streaking right now in the uh, same weight class, Charles Oliveira. Are you familiar with him? I, like, how how closely have you followed his career, Zach? I know you haven't been watching for long, but you're familiar with him at the very least, right? Uh, I know the name, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if I've ever seen. I was just looking for Tyron Woodley's uh, training camp. It looks like he actually might be at ATT again. Really? Yeah, that's what that's what the that's what kind of what I've seen. I don't think I've seen him. I don't have any recent information of him training with uh, Faraz. But I, I again, I've done very, very, very little research. I've been kind of just oh. trying to well, as you were speaking. Um, Charles Oliveira. I, I I've heard his name. I may have seen him fight. I gotta see when the fight card. Hey, let me give you. Okay, yeah, I I watched him. I watched the fight. I think it was at your house for the when he fought Nick Lentz. It was on the uh, RDA yeah. for Kevin Lee. Yeah, you might. I think you might have been over the house for that one. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. Right? Did you know he has the most submission wins? I believe, or he passed one of the uh, the Gracies in UFC. If I have that stat correct, I remember when he did it. That was pretty amazing. Uh, and, uh, did not know. Uh, he's had some notable losses to guys like Cub Swanson, Frankie Edgar. Uh, who else has he lost to? That He lost to Cub in 2012. Paul Felder. Lost to Paul Felder. Yep. 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 He yep. lost to Jim <laughs> Yep. He's lost to Sony. <laughs> But he's been winning. He's won. He's on a streak right now, dude. So he is. He's is that five or six? Yeah. Six wins. Six wins. He is a guy that is uh, currently making his way silently, one to silently creeping. So he's lost it. All of the 
like the top tier, tier people he's fought, though. Yeah. He's never beat one of these top tier guys. I'm trying to think who it, is someone someone he's beat. He beat Clay Guida. He beat yeah. an old Jim Miller. Yeah. He's fought Nick Lentz three times. Yeah. He beat Will Brooks, who was once champion in Bellator. Dominated he him. He beat in that Jeremy fight. Stevens, but in yeah. twenty fourteen at a catch weight because Oliveira missed weight. The dude has had an up and down career. But, but his ups aren't incredible ups. Let's be fair. No, no, they're not incredible ups. Right, but he's beaten he's... five people in a row: an old Clay Guida, an old Jim Miller. I don't, Chris, uh, Christos Diagos. I don't know his. I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Um, he has the most submission win- wins, by the way. Yes, he has he thirteen. He had broke the record at eleven over. Yep. Christos uh, Giagos. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what that guy's. I don't even know who that guy is. Right. He so, beat right. another guy, David Hamer. I again don't yeah. know who it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this, it's, it's, some people might say, if you didn't know anything about mixed martial arts, just say, hey, this guy's beaten a lot of cans, right? But he has beaten him, and he's currently streaking right now. He is, and anyone that wants to disagree with me, he is currently by definition. Streaking right now. Right, he's on so, six wins. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he's not streaking. I'm I'm just saying that <laughs> you're just saying that he beat some guys that could have possibly come out of the YMCA and some <laughs> to be and honest. some guys who could have <laughs> went into a retirement home. <laughs> right, right. He's somewhere between average Joe and pro. <laughs> Ten years past their prime. So here's the thing. Here's what I would like to see. Right, to, I'm not a matchmaker. But if we're going to see if either one of these guys are really going to step back into real contention, put them against each other, right? We get to see if Kevin Lee has really closed out some holes in this game. He is Kevin Lee can dominate from top position and wrestling 100%. And he can snap some submissions himself. We've seen that before. But can he keep a guy like Oliveira, who's going to be coming at him in that tie boxer stance and shooting for his legs every three seconds? Grabbing him by the waist, and surprisingly, Oliveira is a really strong guy to be, to you know, for his body frame. It's a good fight to make. Kevin Lee wins this one. Next step is: Do you position him to take a title shot, or do you let him get another tune-up fight? To, and I'm not saying you're doing him any favors by giving him tune-up fights, but it gives him more time at that camp, dude. It gives him more yeah. time preparing with these guys. Yeah, you know what? This is actually not a bad fight um, to make. I don't think because I, I, Oliver is ranked 13. Kevin Lee's ranked eight. I know the rankings in the UFC mean essentially nothing, um, nope. <laughs> but I, I do still like to base it off of that just because I'm a, I'm a complete novice. Um, yeah, it would be a good fight in it. In it I guess it trade. I guess it proves a, a turning point in either one of their careers. Right. Right. Are one of, is one of these guys going to make a title run? Who knows? Yes. Yeah. Right, this fight would would help us identify whether they are. So, yeah, the answer to the original question: We're not sure where Kevin Lee stands in his career. We need a fight or two to just really see if he's fit into this camp. Really see if he's taken uh, likeness to the camp, and, and we'll see. Right? Yeah, That's, yeah. He's definitely he's definitely got to improve. You know, we got to see if his gas tank is right. We got to see that. Because we, we're not going to forget what his last fight looked at welterweight, right? We're not going to forget how he looked against Tony Ferguson. And Kevin Lee is a stud of an athlete. I just don't know if it's a staff infection. I don't know if it's been a mental thing. I do know that he has everything it takes. Kevin, if you're listening, I think, I believe in you. You can be a champion. I think we give him some more time. We give him this fight. Give him another fight to, you know, see how his cardio is tested. Put him in there, man. We got to see Khabib, Khabib beat. If that dude retires after his next two fights, I won't even acknowledge him as the greatest. Do you know why? Because he didn't stick around long enough to defend it against the guys that I want to fight. <laughs> right? That's the bottom line. It's like we all bought into the lightweight division hype, right? It's a shark tank. It's the deepest division. In actuality, once a guy like Khabib is up there, it's not really that deep, is it? It's, <laughs> it's not that no, deep. No, he makes it. But <laughs> let's be fair. If Khabib moves up to 70... 55 is still a nightmare of a division. It it's returns just that to being a nightmare. He's up there and he's so good yeah. that it makes it look shallow. But 
like I was gonna say John does it the same at two of five, but that is really actually a shallow division, isn't it? Ah, uh, John Jones is an angel of a human being. I didn't I didn't disagree with you there. <laughs> I'm just saying two or five is shallow. The fact it's, it's, that Johnny Walker got two starched. wins. Two wins and they're like, Oh, he's the next one for John and then and lost twice in a row. And then old Hershey Kiss nipple Corey Anderson just brought that hype train right to an end. You know, Corey's uh, apologized profusely, nonstop, more than Kevin Hart. Uh about the way he behaved in the, yes. in the octagon. Yep, I saw that. Uh, you know, if I was him, I'd be like, you know, if I was anyone in there, I'd be like, you know what, say, hey, I agree with the, I want to remain professional. I don't think he had any reason to apologize. He got no fined by get, New York for that. He got fined more than the guy who cheated to make weight. He got fined 10 grand. <laughs> 10 grand. <laughs> Calvin Gaslam used someone else to support his weight so he can offset the scales to get fined a thousand dollars. Oh, did you see the guy that he touched got fined two hundred? But both <laughs> cheater that's amazing. <laughs> Twelve hundred dollars out. New York's like, no, well, that guy was totally unsports like. We're, we're gonna take that. Dude, <laughs> dude, I don't even know how much he makes, but I know that's a significant amount of money that he was gonna pay his trainers, right? Corey they Anderson? Get- yeah, Corey his, Anderson. His the- contract cannot be favorable. No. Did he get a bonus that night? Knock out of the night? Did he? I hope so. Then he's got Then he got he has to pay New York State taxes? Oh. He's not even he's not he even made, a resident. He made seven dollars that night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move away from fighting. We what, we've answered the question. What, 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 one last thing. We got to see it. We got it. We it, and I want to r- respond to one more thing. If Khabib goes up to 170, he gets starched. 100%. Buy who? He will walk into. I'm telling you, don't buy into all this BS about him dominating light heavyweights in wrestling. I'm not. I don't. don't I don't buy don't that. You, <laughs> but he's a natural. Se- he's a natural 170 pounder. All right. It may not be the first can they put him up against, but just remember who's in that. They're not going to put him up against cans though. Okay. Right. He's going. If he goes up, he's fighting for a title at seventy. Let's be fair. Here's, or he fights GSP at seventy. If he doesn't go immediately for a title, right? I know exactly who they're going to put him up against first. Who? They they do this to this poor man every time. It's either going to be RDA, who he's already beat, <laughs> right? <laughs> or it's going to be Damian Maya, because Damian Maya is the guy at one seventy. We got no one for you to fight, but we want to see how you look against some people at this weight division. Against Damian Maya, that's who that old man is in that division. And when it happens, Zach, I want you to—you heard it here first, folks. Let's move on from fighting. Let's move on from fighting. 